How to know if you have H1N1 Even though the days when H1N1, swine flu, was rapidly spreading across the world have passed, it still exists and continues to circulate seasonally worldwide, however, it is now considered a regular human flu virus. While there are basic precautions to take in preventing this disease, no one is guaranteed immunity. Seasonal flu and H1N1 flu have a similar constellation of symptoms and are hard to distinguish from one another unless tested. Since both are treated similarly, and as they both are especially dangerous to vulnerable populations, very young children, elderly, pregnant those with weakened immune systems, seek treatment as soon as possible and then stay home while you recuperate from the flu. Part 1 Checking Your Symptoms 1. Understand that the symptoms of H1N1 and the seasonal flu are essentially the same. H1N1 is now considered by organizations like the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, to be a seasonal flu. The major difference is that H1N1 is a variant influenza virus, meaning it is a variation of the influenza, a virus that most commonly circulates among pigs and is rarely found in humans. H1N1, just like any other flu virus, can be very dangerous for at-risk populations, but is no more or less dangerous than a regular seasonal flu virus. H1N1 cannot be spread by eating pork or pork products. H1N1 is spread from pigs to humans or from human to human contact. If you show signs of the flu after contact with pigs, tell your healthcare provider. 2. Check for fever. Use a thermometer to assess your temperature. If you have a temperature of between 100.4 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit, 38 to 40 degrees Celsius, and some of the other flu-related symptoms, you may have the flu. About 80% of cases of H1N1 involve fever. It is important to note that sometimes people with the flu do not have a fever. 3. Keep an eye out for upper respiratory symptoms. Both influenza and H1N1 can present as very similar constellation of symptoms. If you are coughing, have a sore throat or a runny or stuffy nose, you may have H1N1. Chest discomfort can also be more severe with H1N1 than with seasonal flu. Sneezing is more common with a common cold and not the flu. 4. Watch out for aches or fatigue. As with any flu, body aches and headaches are common, as is fatigue. The level of discomfort varies from person to person whether they have seasonal flu or H1N1 flu. If on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the worst you've ever felt, you feel like you have pain levels from 4 to 6, it is likely moderate pain. If it is above that range, it is likely severe. 5. Expect chills. Chills are common with both the seasonal flu and H1N1. If you are experiencing chills along with other symptoms of H1N1, you may have H1N1. These are not readily distinguishable from the chills associated with seasonal flu. 6. Be aware of gastrointestinal symptoms. Gastrointestinal symptoms are common with both the seasonal flu and H1N1. Such symptoms include vomiting and diarrhea. If you have these symptoms, along with other symptoms, you may have H1N1. Part 2 Getting Tested 1. Get tested at the doctor. Only people who are hospitalized, are pregnant, or have weakened immune systems should get tested for H1N1. Because the type of flu you have does not usually change its treatment, there is little need for the H1N1 test specifically. Treatment does not differ whether you have seasonal flu or H1N1. Additionally, around 99% of cases of the flu during the 2009 season, when H1N1 was at its height, were H1N1. 2. Wait for results. Most rapid test results are unable to distinguish between H1N1 and the seasonal flu. For more accurate results, it is necessary to wait for the lab test that takes several days, however, unless you are hospitalized, you may be well before you get the results. Part 3 Treating and Preventing the Flu 1. Get the Vaccine The more people who get the vaccine, the more immunity in the human population. So in other words, your vaccine helps prevent you and others from getting sick. It's best to get the vaccine early in the season if it is available, but even if you eventually get it toward the end of the season, it still helps. 2. Don't delay treatment. If you have an abrupt onset of fever, headache, chills, body aches, 
cough and fatigue see your healthcare provider as soon as possible. If you are diagnosed with the flu, antivirals are only effective if you start treatment within 48 hours of your symptom onset. 3. Stay home to avoid spreading the flu to others. CDC recommends that people with influenza, like illness remain at home until at least 24 hours after they are free of fever or signs of a fever without the use of fever-reducing medications. This recommendation only applies to camps, schools, businesses, mass gatherings and other community settings. If you work in the healthcare setting, it is recommended that you should stay home for seven days from symptom onset or until the resolution of symptoms. Going out can spread the disease to vulnerable individuals who could be hospitalized or even die. H1N1 isn't unique in this, the regular flu harms the same vulnerable populations. 4. Wash your hands. Use warm water and antibacterial soap. This is especially important before you eat and after you sneeze or cough. Again, your actions help keep you and others from getting sick. 5. Drink plenty of fluids if you get the flu. It is important not to get dehydrated if you have the flu. It can lead to complications. You should stick to beverages that are easy on the stomach like water or herbal tea. 6. Get plenty of rest. Make sure you take it easy while you are healing. You will need your strength to get better. Don't push yourself to work while you're sick with the flu. It will likely extend the period of time you're sick. Tips Always wash your hands or use hand sanitizer. It can go a long way in preventing any sort of flu. If you think you are sick, stay home unless you are elderly, a young child, pregnant, or have a weakened immune system, in which cases you should go to the doctor. Get plenty of rest and fluids. Resolution of cough and weakness may take up to 14 days. Warnings This information is not meant to replace the advice of a medical professional.